Welcome to this lecture where we talk about your dog's stress bucket as well as the bucket fillers and how you can help them to be more calm. So generally we have different states our dogs can be in and this could be fear, this could be excitement or this could be calmness. And one thing I would like to highlight here is that whether they are in fear or whether they are excited, these can be quite similar. And um, I don't know if someone ever told you, <laughs> for example, if you had to give a presentation in a scary place some, and you felt really, really nervous. And I'm sure one person at least told you, oh, you know what? It's actually the same feelings. Your body doesn't really know the difference. So if you just keep telling yourself, oh, I'm not nervous, I'm just super excited, then your head will believe this, right? So similar with our dogs, they can't tell themselves this, but the, the behaviors shown are quite similar. So generally, it makes sense to have the default, not in a fear or an excitement state, but rather a calm state. And if we have a calm dog, they generally make better decisions. So just imagine the scenario, you go with either an excited dog or a fearful dog into a coffee shop, what their behavior most likely would be like. Or if you go with a calm dog, and then quite frankly, doesn't really make too much of a difference if they are very good at sitting or lying down, because if they are calm, they are most likely just be relaxed and they are not going to do naughty things. They're not jumping up on people. They're not trying to steal food, etc. So having a calm dog is the default we would ideally like to get to. And in order to get to the calm state for a dog, we have to keep a few things in mind. And to assess your dog's state or calm state, I really like this picture and it's a metaphor from Absolute Dogs. And this is the stress bucket. So if you imagine your dog has a bucket and this bucket can have a certain size. So some dogs have a bigger bucket um, and then we have things that pay into the bucket. So it's things that happen to the dog and um, exciting things, fearful things, situations, etc. We're going to talk about bucket fillers in just a moment. But so there's things that pay into the bucket and that fill this bucket up. So usually if you see your dog in the morning, they tend to be way more relaxed um, because the bucket is empty after they had a good night's sleep versus in the evening when things have happened all the time and they might not yet have the opportunity to empty this bucket then they might be very quickly to react to things. Yeah, so in order to empty this bucket during the day or um, overnight, etc., we also want to look, and this is point three, at the hole in the bucket. So if you have um, a big bucket hole at the bottom of the bucket, then your stress bucket is most likely be um, below threshold, so it will not be overflowing. And then the size of the bucket doesn't really make too much of a difference, right? So if the hole is really big, then basically the bucket can't really fill up no matter how big the bucket actually is. So what we do want to work on with our dogs is the hole in the bucket. So how, the, how able they are to calm down themselves and to basically go back into a default state when they are stressed. And enrichment actually helps a lot with this because... Um, for example, if your dog who likes to chew things or who engages in licking, which is a passive calming activity, then very often this helps them to settle. Um, this helps them to balance off the stress, which can sit in the jaw, etc. And I always call these things the um, basically doggy equivalent to an adult coloring book. So they do something which is not really um, too hypey or arousing them too much but which gets them into like a meditative state. So this is one thing where we can help our dogs to basically regulate themselves and also to de-stress during the day. So when we look at bucket fillers, and um, I prepared a worksheet for you where you can um, add this to your own dog um, or customize this for your own dog, then we wanna look at things that are positive and negative. And this might be a bit surprising because very often for us it makes more sense to think uh, about the negative things like um, the things I just mentioned like, you know, itchiness, um, GI upset, pain, um, anxiety, fear, frustration, worrying events, etc. You know, all the things that are also stressful for us, that these things are bucket filling makes a lot of sense. And then we forget to look at the positive bits. However, when we go back to the 
um, first slide where we talk about the states excitement and fear and that they are very often very similar and how they are being processed in our body then it makes more sense to also look at them at the positive things and one of these things could be excitement and this could be someone coming home having visitors around um, going on a walk whatever it might be fast play where you have your dog in a high arousal level or fast moving games where they get super hypey um, but have no level of controlling their arousal levels and it's more like a light switch so they go from zero to a hundred and a lot of body breeds are like this so with my clients i very often actually work on this light switch the zero to 100 state and to help the dog to calm themselves down more like a dimmer switch where you can also make romantic light um, yeah, so this is um, something where the dog, if they have not learned to regulate themselves, it can be very difficult for them to to calm down. And you probably have seen this yourself in your dog. Um, after an exciting event, they might come home and be still either completely knocked out and fall asleep, or they're just like still completely crazy and bring you toys and still want to play. Um, or if you have gone on a really nice big walk and you come home and your dog simply doesn't rest. So all of these things might be too bucket filling for your dog. And we're going to talk about this in the chapter about um, how to also tire out high energy dogs who just want to keep on going even after a five hour walk or whatever it might be. Um, constant doing. So if you have a dog who is constantly doing something and this could be something like following you around, going with you, um, being your shadow, being worried about what you're doing, everything is your dog's business, all of these kind of things can be bucket filling for your dog where they're not necessarily um, negative because your dog is not like fear based in these moments although it might be a bit like separation related um, but generally like all the time doing something without giving them the opportunity to rest and basically just sleep can be bucket filling as well as having a predictable routine and um, I guess that this one is a bit controversial because very often we do want to have a predictable routine at least to a certain degree and also when we adopt a new dog or bring a new dog into a household, it helps them to settle quite quickly um, when they have a routine and know what is going on. However, at one point it might make sense to ditch this routine and become a bit less predictable. Um, so that, for example, if um, your dog gets super hypey whenever you pick up your keys and are trying to leave the house because they know you're going somewhere, um, and this can easily maybe turn into some fear related behavior or they think they're coming with you then you might just want to do at some purposeless movement where you pick up your keys all the time without doing anything so again to just help your dog to relax a bit more and if you want any help on this please again do reach out um, I'm here to help I'm training these things so um, yeah please do reach out however it's just, i think at this point here um in this course are just some things to keep in mind how our own behavior basically fills up our dog's bucket and our dogs are very smart and they are very very good at predicting what we're doing especially if you have a herding breed right um, as mentioned i have um, created a worksheet for you where you can customize this again for your own dog and you should be able to pretty easily identify um, behaviors your dog finds either exciting or maybe scary etc um, and that fill your dog's bucket before we do so i would like to talk about um, one thing first that very often i feel like gets forgotten about and this is safety and security and i know we mentioned this already before so i'm not going over um, how to keep your dog safe but what I want to add is the bit on the right and this is does our dog feel safe and I feel this is something that we very very often neglect when we're thinking about um, security or keeping our dog safe it does not matter if we think the situation is not scary or exciting if our dog thinks something is scary then this is scary for our dog right so we do not decide what is scary and by understanding this and keeping this also in mind we can way way better understand how something can fill our dog's bucket even if it does not make any sense to us fears are not rational right so a lot of things are not rational so to keep in mind it's not you who decides what is exciting or what is stressful or bucket filling um, but it is your dog who decides so 
um, yeah, to just really remove any <laughs> any um, filters you have because you'd be like, nah, this can't be it. Oh yes, it might as well be this. So um, yeah, your dog decides whether a situation is scary or exciting.